Hey y'all, it's an elegant coffee chat. Here's yours, here's mine, cheers. Boop. Boop. Okay, so this is a Starbucks, what is it, the flavor Starbucks, I think it's cinnamon dolce, <laughs> little Italian going on. Cinnamon dolce, here you go, cheers. Mm. It's really good. Okay, so why so elegant? Well, first of all, <laughs> first of all, we're going to talk about retirees. Again, seniors. Yeah, most of us are, right? Um, I see my stats and I see the demographics of who's watching this channel and the bulk of you are retirees and seniors. So what we're going to talk about is what do you guys do all day? What do seniors, what do retires do all day? There was a study put out by the Bureau of Labor Statistics and it was of all age groups, but it was surprising about the retirees. So we're going to get into that. I already got coffee burps going on. How elegant is that? <laughs> okay, so why the elegant top, right? I went to Walmart. <laughs> I know. Um, they sold this at Walmart. I was walking around and they had all of their bathing suits that hadn't been sold yet for $2 a piece. Um, the pieces, like $2 for the top, $2 for the bottoms. Now, a lot of them are mixed match because a lot of them have been sold. But I kind of scooped up my size for next year and uh, or for this year. So I got this. I, I didn't find anything black matching uh, for the bottoms. But I do have a pair of shorts that I can wear. Um, they're short shorts that I can wear in the pool. So let me show you what else I got. Okay. For $2.00. This is really cute. Yeah, ties around the neck. I know you guys are gonna love this part. <laughs> yeah, um, I do like this one. Uh, this is, I do like it when they tie around the neck. It's just so much easier. And then they had the bottoms that went with it, yes. Okay, <laughs> moving on. I'm not that partial to orange, but it's pretty cool, it's sort of a, um, a cream sickle. Remember the cream sickles? Yeah. And then I got a couple different tops that go with this. I really like this one. Yeah. I did. I do have to alter them. I have to bring them in around. So I've already done that. I kind of altered it. Did some stitching. Did my own stitching. No, I don't have a sewing machine. I just, you know, stitch. And then this one is kind of cute too. It goes with this. I know it's kind of a lot. And then they had these bottoms. I kind of like these bottoms. Yeah, it's kind of like it. And I thought maybe like it's got some orange in it, but it's also got some blue in it. So yeah. And um, let's see, these I'd already had. You've seen this before. It's a uh, it's a limey green, lime green, fluorescent lime green top. I've already worn this before, but I did find the bottoms that go with it. So the bottoms, yeah. And then I already had this top. I really, really, really like this top. Yeah, it's very colorful. And so I've got a lot of bathing suits, but they're going to last me a while. And then I got the bottoms that go with it. As far as my sewing kit, oh, I used to be a major sewer and I had all kinds of, you know, all the equipment. But now my sewing kit is reduced to a baggie. <laughs> I tried to pick when I went to uh, the pink and black, white or uh, cream color, some blue. Yeah, this is pretty much it, yeah. But you know, it works. What did I do? I had a lot of needles. What did I do with my needles? Oh, yeah. There we go. Uh, all kinds of needles and pins. Needles and pins. 
I'm sitting on needles and pins. Okay, so I just thought I'd show you that. And it's kind of fun just to wear sometimes. In, um, you can just put on a, like I have now a, a top, a bathing suit top. If you're not like going out or something, you're just relaxing in your van and then just put some black shorts on. Yeah. So they're kind of fun. The bathing suits are fun. Bathing suits. Okay. But these will get put away. I'll wear these for the next couple of years. Okay. Now seniors. Yes. Um, another cup of coffee. Well, I was really glad. What is the name of the study? It's called the American Time Wise Study. And I do have me notes. Oh, yeah. Because if you consider even a president has a teleprompter, if I had a teleprompter, I could just really look really professional, right? But I need my notes. Yeah. Okay, so... I did enjoy reading this and I thought it would be appropriate because I've really been doing a lot of the talking about, well, Paul and I both, where's Paul? Where is Paul? Well, Paul is still sleeping. He hasn't been feeling too good. Um, side note, side note, uh, we had to go, I had to go down to Tucson and he went with me and it's really, really hot down there. He had never experienced summer down there before. He kind of caught a little bit of a cold. Um, the day we left, he started feeling like he had a, a bit of a cold. So he's just uh, recovering from that, and he'll be back. And Abby girl is doing just fine. Okay, back to the uh, retirement studies. I was so glad that they're doing studies like this, and they're including seniors. People have, are, have been living older over the past you know, 10, 20 years, we're living longer. Bulk of studies done, psychological studies and human studies, social, uh, social studies are uh, really been um, about like the younger folks, babies, development of babies, development of children, and um, you know, sort of that age group in their teens. But more and more studies are including older adults, midlife people you know, from in their 30s and their 40s. And, uh, but now it is really good because what, as I get older, and I know if you're older, you know it too, there's still a development that goes on. And each decade has a different type of passage. I don't know if some of you remember that book called Passages. And it was about each decade has a different passage. It has a different theme to us as humans. And there are different things that we have to deal with as we go through a certain passage. Now, I did talk to my son on the phone and he is going to be 41. He's 40 and right now. And we were talking about that. And there's I see such a difference in him of where he is with his working and his career and what he's thinking about and some changes in his thoughts and ideas. So, you know, we were taught, I told him about that and I said, well, you're going through a different passage. You're done with your thirties. Now you're going into your forties and I can't quote what each passage means, but I do remember, and I've mentioned this before on, uh, I watched an Oprah way back and she had Maya Angelo on and I think and I'm I think Oprah and I are exactly the same age and they were talking about different stages and ages and Maya told her she said wait till you become 70 it is the most awesome decade ever well Maya Angelo isn't with us anymore I'm going to be turning 70 in June and I'm really excited about it. I mean, why not? And all of this, this age is going to have to do with the things that Paul and I have talked about previously about what do seniors do? How can seniors have a better life? So all in all, bottom line is I'm really happy that sociologists and psychologists are doing more studies, including seniors, because there are passages we go through too. I'm sure the seventies are going to be a little bit different than the eighties. 
and then so on and so forth. And I do believe that we can live you know, a lot longer. I don't believe that 60 and 70 needs to be considered this old age thing. I really don't. I think it's really up here. And a lot of you in your comments have expressed that. So, okay, on to the study. What do seniors do during the day? How is that so different than somebody maybe in their prime working years, which is considered to be like 54 to 65? Those are your prime career years because you've already kind of, if you're going to climb the ladder, you've already kind of climbed the ladder and you got that 10 year period before you decide if you're going to retire or not. Well, as it turns out, everyone does basically the same thing, working or non-working. What we do is we sleep, we eat, we shop, we work, and we have leisure time on our hands. Those are those blocks of things that we do, those categories. Now, so, and it is a little bit different for each different age group. And they did even young people all the way up to, um, uh, in their, I believe it's 65 to 74. That was the last uh, group. I don't know why they didn't include, why didn't they include like 75 to 84? I don't know. Maybe the sample wasn't as large because uh, some people have passed away before that time. Okay, I don't know, but yeah. Okay, so basically this study was, they wanted a window into American life. Amer this was an American study, not an international study. So as far as retirement goes, they wanted to know, is life lived to the fullest or does it look surprisingly like our working years? Because there, one of the misconceptions, as it turns out, misconception, is that when you hear about, oh, I'm retired, that it's going to be like uh, cruises. <laughs> There's going to be cruises involved. There's going to be a lot of traveling, kicking your feet up, playing golf, just all those kinds of things that connotates I'm retired. I'm retired. I've worked all my life. Now I'm going to enjoy my life sitting on the beach and blah, 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 right? Well, as it turns out, the results... They compared 55 to 64 prime working years, like I mentioned, and then 65 to 75, uh, the retirement years. They kind of, they did all the age groups, but with what we're going to talk about, we're going to compare those two groups of people. And the retirees, they, the results are that seniors, they spend less time working. Okay, that makes sense, doesn't it? They spend less time working on education and caring for children. Those three little blocks um, they're spending less time on. There are still seniors that are taking care of their grandkids though, right? And they're doing education, educational things, and some are still working. But as a, as a whole, they're spending more time. We as seniors are spending, according to the study, more time on personal care, eating, uh-oh, <laughs> household activities. See, we have more time to do household activities. Shopping, leisure, civic activities, oh yeah, and talking on the phone. <laughs> and we talk on the phone, isn't that funny? I hope you're enjoying this. I really enjoyed it, and I thought I would present this to you. Paul and I were going to do this together, but because he's just a little bit under the weather, a true, he's <laughs> he's still sleeping. Yeah. Okay, so let's get to the bottom line. I'm a bottom line girl here. Typical retiree, listen to this, if this will make sense. The typical retiree took 2.4 2.5 hours per day from work and moved it over into leisure activities. 2.5 hours per day. That is all that basically has changed. We're still eating. We're still cleaning the house. We're still shopping, things like that. Like all the worker people. 
So that's kind of surprising, huh? You'd think that, oh, it would be totally changed. But believe me, you know where I'm going with this. Because I'm going to be talking about the nomad life because I'm a nomad. And a lot of you are nomads. But we're all together in this. I, I want to put us all into the, the same globe here. Because if you're living in a house, we're, we're really all the same. Um, but we'll get into the nomad aspect and we'll do some comparing between people living in a house and people living out on the road. Okay, so it doesn't, basically the study shows that retirees' lives, and this study was done in 2020, doesn't really look drastically different than the typical working person, right? Working years. It's just a reallocation of 10 to 20% of our time. And that makes sense. I mean, we do think, oh, retiree, what are we going to do? Um, what are we going to do with our time? I mean, and I've heard, I think the, the main theme in the past of what we've heard is that a retiree, if they retire and they don't really have anything too much else going on, that it isn't too far down the road and then they pass away. And so we're going to talk about that. I got the coffee burps. <laughs> How elegant. Huh? Yeah. Eh, yeah. You know me, I'm a little on fire in the morning. Chatty. Remember Chatty Kathy? I'd never had one of those dolls. It was Chatty Kathy. I think you pulled, didn't you pull the string or something? I didn't have one of those, but Okay. So basically, our time has moved from obligation to choice. We moved from our working years for we were obligated to do these things. And a lot of us, you know, we had the children at home, things like that. Um, but you know what? A lot of us also, well, from 65 to 75, yeah, if we do have elderly parents they would be very elderly I think the block between 55 and 64 would be the block where we were obligated if we had um, aging parents that we would take care of them but once we're 65 to 75 um, that might not be the case that we would have um, aging parents at home and our children are kind of gone so I guess that would be the sweet spot right 65 to 74 okay so it's from obligation to choice. So basically, retirement happens. Really, our retirement, what means to us to be retirement, it kind of happens in the margins. It doesn't really happen, um, you know, like in your face all day long. I'm retired. Ooh, look at me. I'm retired. I'm, you might, I suppose some people, they would go on a cruise here and there. But this miscon, if there ever was a misconception, I think as older people, we don't really misconcept that. But I think younger people might actually like, oh, retired people, they get to do whatever they want. Well, sort of, but we're kind of still, according to the study, we're still doing sort of the same things as everybody. So retirees, let me get out my glasses. Oh, let's see a little bit better. I know they're blue. They glare. Bear with me so I can read this better. Retirees are given a few extra hours each day. And that's really what the bottom line is all about. <clears throat> so how creative you are. Listen to this. This is the key. How creative you are determines how fulfilling your retirement years will be. Well, got to be creative. And this goes for nomads and uh, for just people in sticks, sticks and bricks. Let me see if I can get my lips to move properly. Sticks and bricks. You got to be creative. You can't just sit in your lazy boy. <laughs> you know, you can't just do that. Or if you're a nomad, you can't just sit in your front seat all day. You got to be a little creative if you want to be fulfilled, okay? So, how are retirees in America doing? The numbers are concerning. 
Here we go. According to the BLS study, Bureau of Labor Statistics, retirees are spending 10 of their extra hours per week in leisure. Okay. But we just already kind of went with that. It'd be like 2.5 hours a day. But the bulk, six hours a week of that block are spent watching TV. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're just sitting in our chairs and watching TV. Well, you know, I could be guilty of it too. I mean, I sit here and what I do is sometimes I sit back here. I prop my phone over there. And I watch a program. Uh, I'll bet I do six hours, right? But I also have, because I'm a nomad, I also have a little bit more hours to spend. And I can grab it from um, basically like doing household charts. I don't have a house. I have a small minivan and I can clean this up in probably about, I mean, wiping it down and everything. I can do that a lot faster than I can an actual house. I don't have to mow the lawn. I don't have to do th certain things like that. So a nomad actually does have a little bit more time in that block of their leisure time, you know. So, okay. so let me go to the next. This is my, <laughs> this is my teleprompter. Isn't it nice? Oops, you can see it. That'd be pretty, wouldn't it be cool to have a teleprompter? <laughs> I would love that. Okay. The, rent, the rest is spent relaxing, socializing, and travel. But the travel, <laughs> see these are little blocks, but the travel turns out statistically, percentage-wise, to be a whopping 3.6 minutes a day. <laughs> so seniors aren't doing a over the long haul, aren't doing a whole lot of traveling. Yeah. I don't know if they included any nomads into this study, right? But actually, a lot of us nomads aren't really uh, traveling a lot right now because of gas prices. And it's summer. We've picked a spot and we kind of hunkered down in that spot so that because we know that this is where it's going to be. Um, cool, the coolest for us, what we, what we have chosen. And these are a little bit odd times, which I did that whole series, you know, to pick a spot and stay there and then see what happens over the next few months. Um, okay. But so the question is, da, 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 why are, why aren't so many retirees out traveling? If that's what it connotates, you know, we're going to be traveling. Well, a lot of us are, but um, nomads. And fulfilling their retirement dreams. Why aren't the bulk of seniors, retirees, why aren't we out fulfilling our dreams of retirement that we dreamed about? Well, here we go. Here's where we're going to talk about why because most retirees are unprepared financially for retirement they're unprepared so because retirees are unprepared tv is winning out by default a lot of seniors and this is another subject uh, that i'm going to talk about on the next video i've got some fascinating uh, stats and discussions that I want to talk about with seniors. A lot of seniors are very lonely. If they're living in the house, they're very lonely. And there's a lot of nomad seniors who are very lonely too. They just don't feel very social. Um, so they're not really connecting up yet or they haven't been to court site yet where they can start meeting and, and connecting up. But we're going to talk about that um, in the next couple of videos. Okay, so... How can we, let's talk about the solutions, because I, I love the solutions. I don't want to just talk about, oh, this is a, a, a really doom and gloom thing. This is reality. I like to talk about reality. I think reality is very important uh, to get this, uh, to talk about solutions, what's really going on. But there are solutions to everything, right? Right, right. Okay. Okay. Well, Here's one of the, here's one of the issues. 
I'm talking about seniors and senior retirement life and what reality is for seniors, our block of people up here. My brothers and my sisters, <laughs> the people like my generation we grew up with. Well, that's all really great, but I'm sort of like, since my demographic is mostly us, I'm sort of talking to the choir, aren't I? We need to get, so I'm going to leave this up to you. This is your challenge. You need to tell your children and your grandchildren some of these solutions because they need to prepare. If that's even possible with the way the world is, everything's changing, but at least prepare a little bit to save money, at least save something, um, put something back, uh, get your uh, gold, silver, however you want to do that financially. I did a video on that, um, how to prepare yourself financially for an uncertain um, future. Okay. Now, so saving. Now simplify. And as a nomad, let me go back with that. You better have a savings coming out as a nomad. You better have something to fall back on. Simplify. There, there are the same. <laughs> whoops, I couldn't read my. If I had a teleprompter, I'd be maybe reading it wrong. <laughs> okay. Maybe teleprompter isn't always the answer. You could read it wrong, right? Um, I know they do now have something that you can put up there above that will give the words and everything. Maybe I should buy something like that. Yeah. Okay. So basically, there's, we all have the same 24 hour period. It really depends on how we're going to use that, right? I hear Abby. And we need to simplify your chores. Let's simplify our chores, just like I have done. And I moved into a minivan. I simplified my chores. I don't have to do uh, major vacuuming, scrubbing my bathrooms, things like that. So nomads, there's where the difference is. Nomads have already done this. We simplified our chores by moving in to our vehicles. <laughs> there you go. I mean, we have to do other things too, but we don't have a house anymore and we don't have the upkeep and the repairs and, and having to get on the phone. Hey, finding, uh, comparing prices for, you know, to get things fixed. Okay. So there's where the comparison is between a house dweller and a nomad living in their vehicle. We simplified everything. But this was in the article, this was, this was the, the solution um, of ways to get more leisure time and have more fun and keep our mind and body going. Yeah. Okay. Now have specific plans for your leisure time. Make plans. Um, don't just sit in your, uh, your lazy boy chair watching TV. Get and start making some plans of what you're going to do with your time. Well, here again, nomads did that. <laughs> we made plans. And I want to put out my book, um, How to Live in a Minivan, the Minivan Leeway. Um, that book, it's, it's not expensive. If you want to get out here, even just part-time, you know, don't just get rid of your house. If you want to, go ahead, but don't just do that. That I'm going to get you from A to Z to get you in a, in a minivan or an SUV or a high top van or whatever you want. It's the same thing. Um, I just happen to live in a minivan. So that's how I titled it. But to get out there and go do some camping, go do some camping uh, for the weekend or the week and then come back and you can watch TV, you know, or whatever. But yeah, so, but nomads already did that. Full-time nomads, we already made the plan. And we still make the plan. So Paul and I are always making the plan. Okay, what are we going to do today? Where are we going to go today? You know, what are we going to do? Okay, retire to something, not from something. And guess what? Again, that's what nomads did. We retired from, from something. Yes. No, we didn't. We <laughs> Okay, scratch that one. We retired to something. Yeah. Um, we retired to the nomad life. Well, that's what I did. And I did it, um, you know. Yeah. I just decided because I was working. I have my own business. I was working. I gave it all up. I said, this is the life for me. And I'm going to jump into it, right? Let me take a sip. Mm. <clears throat> okay, we're all, we're getting there. Dream big. 
always dream big. Don't dream, don't dream small. You know, really go for it. Go for the big gusto. Yes. And that's what we did as nomads. We decided to jump right into it. You know, when change happens, magic happens. Yes. Don't quit learning. Oh, no. I mean, even when I'm doing these videos and I'm doing a lot of um, uh, bringing you in new information, I have to learn this information myself. And I'll, I guarantee nomads are always learning. We have to learn how to use our phones. I don't know how many nomads I've had to show and uh, to, to teach them the technology of it. Because you need to use like Google Maps. You need to know how to make coordinates for your friends. You need to um, see what's in the area. You know, use Google Maps for all kinds of things. And you need to get on your phone to do some research. Where am I going? What's in the area? And yeah, so don't, nomads continue learning all the time. We're not just sitting in our uh, lazy boy chairs watching TV or our iPads or whatever you're watching it on. Yeah. <clears throat> so nomads, <clears throat> I believe nomads do most of us spends our time wisely. I've seen some nomads that I suspect know, and I've, I've seen a few out here. They're not spending their time wisely at all. They're sitting in the front seat, <clears throat> um, watching a program. They're, they're also, that's the front seat for a lot of nomads has become the new lazy boy chair. And it always gives them swollen ankles, you know, cause the blood doesn't flow properly. I got the burps. I got the hiccup. <laughs> Probably because I'm drinking and I'm talking at the same time. Okay. So don't just sit in your front seat. Yeah. All day long. So what do we do all day and what can we do all day? I've got a list of things <clears throat> to do. I But first, but first I want to mention <clears throat> that most of my the people that I hang with out here on the road that we meet up with and, and we're parked. So we don't spend all day together. I mean, I do with Paul. Yes, but we now have friends that are in the same area as us. We said, yeah, let's go here. And we're in the same area and we meet up or we see each other like at a, at the grocery store or at Walmart. We go, oh, you're here in the area. There are only, there are certain areas where nomads kind of flock to in the summer and in the winter and all that yeah but most of them that I know that we hang with we're busy oh my gosh we are busy uh, Max Max is always busy I hooked up with Mary saw Mary she's one of my friends um, and saw her and so we met at the senior center and we had dinner together seen we, and she's an artist. We do not just sit. There's no way. We're our busy, busy, busy beavers. Busy bees. And so the friends that I hang with are very busy all day long. We do not just sit and, and watch TV. So, but there are some nomads who do. So you can't just clump us all together. Oh, nomads are always so busy. Okay, so what do we do all day? I'm going to list some activities. Okay. And I'm going to list them. And these are some ideas to keep busy with. Knitting, paint. These are arts and crafts. Knitting, painting, jewelry making, photography, cooking, musical instruments, learning a new one, and acting. You know, getting involved, if you're in a sticks and bricks, getting involved in um, a theater group in your neighborhood. Yes, you can be older, they, you know, and still act. Wouldn't that be fun? I, yeah, I would, I would love to do something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, games. Cards, bridge, chess, checkers, bingo, and puzzles. Now, they have a lot of this at senior centers. Get involved in a senior center. Social, social work or not social work, but social fun, a, a book club, a ham radio club. Yeah, that's something I want to do too. Um, computer classes, go to museums. There are clubs that go to museums, senior centers, volunteer work, um, start learning how to do genealogy and just do part-time work. A lot of us do part-time work, right? So here's what I want to say about that. 
Yes. When it comes to exercise and outdoor work, I'm going to list these, but here's the thing. If you, let's, we talked about in the study that one of the reasons that a lot of you don't have a really good looking retirement later years to 65 to 74 or to 80, whatever, they don't look so interesting. It's because you don't have the resources. You didn't plan or something happened, things like that. I mean, anything can go wrong, right? And take your money away from you. Um, here's where exercise is so, 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 so important that you can still work. I mean, if that's part of your social life is doing part-time work, if you don't have the physical ability to work, you're not going to do it. You're not going to be able to do it. So how important is staying physically fit? And you can tell your children and grandchildren this, you must stay physically fit all through your life. You can't just decide, oh, I think I'll save, I think I'll get fit and I'm 65, 70. Yeah, it's going to help. But wouldn't it be better if you just stayed that way all the way through? Yeah, I did exercise all the way through. And, um, oh, look at me. Isn't that wonderful? Well, it's just, I just want to bring that to you that, um, and I didn't even think, oh, I want to be um, physically fit in my senior years. That wasn't in my mind. I just enjoyed, I wanted to look good and feel good all through my life. And so I just did that. But it's especially, the one of the rewards is when you get older and you're physically fit. So, Outdoors activities, travel, hiking clubs, bird watching clubs. I would love that. I love birds and stargazing clubs. In Arizona, there's a lot of stargazing clubs and they go out at night. Oh yeah. You get like a, uh, a, um, a telescope and yeah, I had my astronomy binoculars. I did have those. I gave them to my daughter. They were so heavy and I wasn't using them very much. So I know that they'll get good use out of them, but yeah. And there's so many more outdoor stuff. This is just condensed. Okay. And then exercise as a retiree. Golf, swimming, dancing, yoga, juggling. <laughs> Why not learn how to? And that doesn't cause anything. You just learn how to juggle. And then um, walking clubs and fishing. And those are just a minuscule of things that can happen in your senior years to get yourself to have a really nice... Um, life in our retirement because as seniors we're not done yet the best years are are here everybody if you're a senior your best years are now they really are and i want you to make something of them and this study kind of is an eye opener we're all basically let's do a little bullet point here a reminder we're all sort of doing the same things that we were doing with the working people and in our working years, but we've added on about 10 hours a week to our leisure life and nomads even more because we don't have all those other, we don't have to mow the lawn. We don't have to um, clean our houses and things like that. So we, so nomads, I'm going to say we've added on maybe 30 to 40% of our, our activity. We've added on to leisure and just having fun, enjoying ourselves. So, um, Make sure that you have a, a savings of some sort and make sure you have the physical ability to continue earning money. Now, let's say that you don't have the good capacity to earn. You can always write a book, can't you? And you can publish it on Amazon. So get busy writing books or writing something. Do, do whatever you can to keep going and make sure you have a good social life, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this discussion. And uh, my swimsuits, my elegant coffee chat. Yeah, I really do like this. And <laughs> I know, I know. Well, I'm, I'm totally covered up. I know, but it is a swimsuit top. And I, I'm, I think I'm going to wear this today. It's so warm outside. It has been warm. Oh, my gosh. So the reason I had to go to Tucson was because I had to fix my air conditioner. And so I drove there because I trust the mechanics there that I have. So I'll do a plug for them. Dirty Tees. I know, isn't that funny? It's an, but they are wonderful. 
and they always do a good job for me because I've heard horror stories that I've heard of um, mechanics literally ruining, ruining. They put too much in and now they have to have a complete all new uh, AC unit in there, which is uber expensive. So what they did was they zapped up my Freon and because it wasn't well, but it wasn't blowing either. So what they did was they found that my cabin filter was dirty. I've told you about them cabin filters, right? Well, get this, everybody. I just, because this is a new van, I, I realized in May that I didn't even have a cabin filter. So I went out and bought one. So I put one in May, May, June, and July. Really? In three months, my cabin filter was so filthy that I had to have a new one. It was impeding my air conditioner, my fan blowing. Uh, uh, word of advice, check your cabin filter in your glove compartment area. Oh my gosh. I think it was because I traveled all the way to Ohio and back and in three months time. So if you do a lot of traveling, change your cabin filter. Okay, so I won't keep going with this. Get the book, How to Live in a Minivan, The Minivan Lee Way. And it does help support me. I've got arm, arm gaiters and neck gaiters. Yes. And I've got those exercise videos. I want you to go ahead and, you know, get that. And, you know, minivanlee.com and go on there. If you want to give me a gift, I have gifts on there. Everything from my website, minivanlee.com, I get 100% of everything it's not through patreon or anything else if you want to give me a gift it's all there i've got different amounts um for gifts and subscribe give me a thumbs up i love you guys i love you guys so much i hope you enjoyed it and until the next time i love you guys bye